The Bible is both the most beloved and most hated book in history. This seeming contradiction is the result of the differences in how people respond to the Bible. Those who see the Bible as God's word, showing them the way of salvation, love the Bible. Those who are brought under conviction by the Bible, but do not want to repent, hate it. Knowing what the Bible really is, is important. If it is just another piece of ancient mythology, then it would be worthless beyond its literary content. But if the Bible is the word of God, then it is the most important book ever written, and you ignore it at the peril of your soul. The Bible is more than just a book of religious instruction. Not everything in the Bible has religious or moral implications. Sometimes the Bible just states the facts without commenting on the moral or religious implications of it. However, it often shows the consequences of bad decisions. This occurs mainly in historical sections of the Bible. The Bible is not mythology. Neither is it a mixture of mythology and history, though it does contain history. However, some aspects of mythology from the ancient world do support events described in the Bible. For example, civilizations from all over the world have stories of a global flood survived by one family and a bunch of animals on a boat. This suggests that these stories are corrupted versions of the account of Noah's flood in the Bible. Much of the Bible is history. Historical books include Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Job, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy also contain the Mosaic Law as well as some songs. The Bible also contains poetry including Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastics, Song of Solomon, and Lamentations. Yes, Job contains both history and poetry. The Bible also contains prophecy including Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, and Revelation. These also contain some history beyond their prophecies whose fulfillment are now history. In the New Testament, the Bible also contains several epistles, that is, letters, including Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrew, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and Jude. These mainly contain doctrine and instruction, though they do contain some history as well. Doctrine and instruction are found in other books as well. The Bible contains two main divisions, the Old Testament and the New Testament. There is a gap of about 400 years between the Old and the New Testament, which is why there is such a clear division. There are eight common objections to the Bible. Each of them is given with a response. There are probably others that are used, but these are the ones I have encountered. If one has been missed, it is because I have not encountered it before. It is too hard to read. This objection is probably correct if you are trying to read it in Greek or Hebrew, since they are both difficult languages to learn. However, if you understand this sentence, then you can read the Bible in English. It also helps to know the Bible's author, that is, God. The English of the King James Bible is not as hard to read as is often claimed, and in many ways is more precise than what we commonly use. The use of the singular personal pronouns, such as thou, is more precise than using you for both plural and singular. The fact is that the King James Bible is not particularly hard to read. It is mainly a matter of getting used to the early modern English, which only differs a little from modern English. It is boring. Anyone who thinks this has clearly never really read the Bible because nothing could be further from the truth. The Bible contains a lot of history, which includes wars, spying, intrigue, mysteries, romance, and a lot more. Even those portions of the Bible not dealing with history are exciting to someone really interested in studying it. The point is that the Bible is far from boring, which is one reason why even Hollywood has turned to its pages for movies. It is too old-fashioned. The intent here is to imply that the Bible is out of date. This is based on the fact that it stands in contrast with many liberal ideas and attitudes. The fallacy here is to assume that liberal ideas and attitudes are correct and the Bible is wrong and out of date. The truth is that the Bible represents a timeless standard that can never be out of date. You may of course reject the Bible because you do not like what it says, but casually dismissing it as old-fashioned, as intellectual laziness, is bronze and iron age mythology. This is based on the notion of so-called higher criticism. 
The presupposition is that the Bible is no different than the mythology of ancient Egypt, Babylon, or Greece. It also assumes that any event described in the Bible is not historical unless confirmed by another source. It further assumes that the human writers of the books of the Bible are not those that the books are attributed to. The reason originally given for Moses not writing the first five books of the Bible was the assumption that writing had not been invented yet. This assumption has long been proven wrong. The Bible is unique in many ways from ancient mythologies. The Bible is totally monotheistic, that is, one God, while ancient mythologies are polytheistic, that is, many gods. The history given in the Bible blends seamlessly into externally verified history. The Bible does not idolize men and women within its historic narratives, showing that it is presenting an honest history. The Bible also makes historically verified prophecies, hundreds of which about the Messiah were fulfilled by Jesus himself during his time on earth 2,000 years ago. Some of these prophecies have been filled in recent times, such as Israel becoming a nation in 1948 and Israel taking Jerusalem in 1967. In fact, even today, events and other factors are setting the stage for other biblical prophecies to be fulfilled. The simple fact is that the Bible cannot just be dismissed as mythology. There are many ways in which the Bible differs from mythology. It is, in fact, an accurate record of real ancient history. It is unscientific. While the Bible is not a science textbook, where it speaks on science, it is accurate. By this I mean that there is nothing in the Bible that contradicts operational science. There is, however, disagreement between the Bible and some claims of some historical sciences that are based on anti-biblical assumptions. Yes, some passages have been interpreted as indicating a geocentric system and even a flat earth. However, these are misinterpretations of the passages in question. These passages usually use commonly used terms like sunrise and sunset or simple observational descriptions. It is not consistent with the Egyptian chronology. While it is true that the Bible is not consistent with the traditional Egyptian chronology, all that shows is that at least one of them is wrong. Objecting to the Bible because it is not consistent with the traditional Egyptian chronology assumes that the Egyptian chronology is correct. There are, however, reasons to question the traditional Egyptian chronology. The traditional Egyptian chronology is based on a list of pharaohs compiled by the 3rd century priest Minetho. The pharaoh's list includes the length of their reigns, and the traditional Egyptian chronology assumes they reigned sequentially, when some may have reigned at the same time in different areas of Egypt, such as north and south. Not only was Mantho's Egyptian pharaoh's list not intended as a chronological account of Egyptian history, but it does not agree with other 3rd century Egyptian sources. You can add to this the fact that Egyptian pharaohs sometimes engaged in history revisionism as well as exaggerating their own accomplishments. The Bible, on the other hand, is incredibly honest, showing the flaws of even the most godly of men. This means that the biblical chronology is more likely to be accurate than the traditional Egyptian chronology. Furthermore, when the Egyptian chronology is adjusted to include the overlapping dynasties, the Egyptian chronology lines up with the biblical chronology. It is inconsistent with the Big Bang. While this is true, it feels as a valid objection to the Bible because it is possible to build a scientifically valid cosmology based on the Bible. This objection also assumes the Big Bang is correct despite its numerous problems. This is a classic case of the logical fallacy. Your theory does not work under my theory, so your theory must be wrong. It's anti-evolution. That depends upon what one means by evolution. If you mean by evolution the observed changes that can occur over time within various kinds of organisms, like dogs producing different varieties of dogs, then the answer is no. If you mean by evolution the hypothesis that all life on Earth is descended from a common single-cell ancestor, then the answer is yes. The observed changes that can occur over time within various kinds of organisms represents a loss of information, usually through mutations. With natural selection to filter out the worst mutations, it still represents an increase in randomness of the genetic content of every organism. This increase in genetic randomness over the life of each organism is why we all eventually die. This is fully consistent with the biblical account of creation. The hypothesis that all life on Earth is descended from a common single-cell ancestor, on the other hand, requires an increase in information, something that mutations and natural selection cannot produce. This is because information requires order, while mutations are random, and natural selection lacks the order needed to overcome that randomness. The Bible is definitely opposed to this form of evolution, since it clearly says that God created all living things after their kind. 
However, the idea that all life on Earth is descended from a common ancestor is a conclusion drawn by starting with the assumption that the Bible is wrong. So it is no surprise that it contradicts the Bible. Those that scoff at the Bible often misrepresent what the Bible says to make it look as if the Bible teaches things it does not in an effort to discredit it. Sometimes this misrepresentation takes actual verses out of context. Sometimes this misrepresentation is a total lie about what the Bible actually says. One common example is the fact that the historical portions of the Bible will sometimes report what someone did without commenting on the morality of it. The misrepresentation comes from claiming the act of reporting has an endorsement of the activity. Another common example is to take something from the Mosaic Law and pretend it applies generally. Much of the Mosaic Law was intended as a civil code for the ancient nation of Israel and does not apply outside that civilization. This civil code sometimes includes laws governing things that God does not approve of, but tolerates. The failure to distinguish between tolerance and approval is another form of misrepresentation. Another form of misrepresentation involves exaggerating a perceived negative and or making them look one-sided. An example would be emphasizing a perceived negative for women while ignoring the negatives for men. Sometimes these negatives are real but exaggerated by the person doing the misrepresentation, but other times they are just made up. Misrepresentations about the Bible are quite common. Some of them are honest misunderstandings, but many are deliberate misrepresentations resulting from trying to make the Bible look bad. However, the Bible is a spiritual book and needs to be spiritually understood. Thus, unbelievers tend to misunderstand it. Once one comes to know Jesus as Savior, it can be spiritually understood. What the Bible really is, is the Word of God. What does this mean? It means that God ultimately wrote the Bible through human offers by verbal inspiration. So what is verbal inspiration by God? Inspiration is the Spirit of God influencing the human author resulting in inerrant scripture. Verbal inspiration means that the Spirit of God influenced the human authors in the very words that they used. This verbal inspiration by God is not limited to the original writings commonly referred to as autographs, but is preserved through copying and translation. Now this does not mean that every copy and every translation of the Bible is inspired, as is obvious by some of the garbage out there masquerading as Bibles. Acts 2, 5, and 6. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. As on the day of Pentecost, God wants us to have his word in our own language. As a result, the Spirit of God influences human translators in the very words that they use in many languages. For the English language, this translation is the King James Bible. How do we know that the King James Bible is God's inspired inerrant word in English? The KJB is the only English translation considered by its supporters to be God's inspired inerrant word in English. The King James Bible is attacked more than any other English translation. Yet, despite these attacks, it has endured for over 400 years. Not only has the King James Bible passed the test of time, but God has used it mightily to win souls to himself more than any other version of the Bible. There are many other lines of evidence that are beyond the scope of this discussion, but these are the simplest. So if you have a King James Bible, you have God's inspired and errant word in English. The main message of the Bible is that of the fall of mankind and God making redemption available to mankind through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Since all men have sinned, Romans 3.23, we deserve the penalty for sin, which is spiritual death in hell, and all are in need of redemption. However, since Jesus paid the penalty for all of our sin by his death on the cross, God offers eternal life with him as a free gift, Romans 6.23. Accepting God's free gift of salvation involves believing on Jesus Christ and his redemptive work of dying on the cross and raising from the dead, Romans 10, 9, and 10, and repenting of your sin, Acts 20, 21. Once this is done, it is simply a matter of asking the Lord to come into your heart and save you, Romans 10, 13. The Bible is a unique book that many people love and see as the Word of God, while others hate it. The Bible is much more than a book of religious instruction, but also contains history, poetry, prophecy, and more. The Bible is the Word of God written by God through human authors by verbal inspiration. The King James Bible is God's Word in the English language, having been proven by God using it so mightily to win souls to himself. The Bible speaks of the fall of mankind and God making redemption available to mankind through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as a free gift. Accept God's gift of salvation by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior.